with the Virginia Capital Trail Foundation. Thanks. Thank you. Chet. <laughs> Chet Parsons, Plan RBA. Todd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Todd Jair, Henrico Public Works. Uh, Ms. Brenner. I'm Gladys Brenner with AB Design. We are the signage consultants for the wayfinding for this project. Thank you. Nicole. I'm Nicole Hentrup. I'm a traffic engineer with Chesterfield County. Hi. Hello. Uh, we have Ms. Firestone. Uh, Kit Friedman. Hi, I'm Kit Friedman. Pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm a new planner at the Crater Planning District Commission. Welcome. Liz. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Liz McAdory, the Richmond District Planning Manager, and I'm one of the several VDOT points of contact. Nora. Hi, Nora Amos, Town of Ashland, Planning Community Development. Thank you. Ron. Hi, this is Ron Spikowski, Director of Transportation and GIS for Crater PDC and Tri Cities Area MPO. Thank you. Sam. Um, we have Sam Sink with GRTC on. Um, we have Sid, thank you. Um, Sharon. Hi, good morning. Sharon Smidler, Henrico County Public Works Transportation Development Division. Thank you. Barb? And Chessa. Chesterfield County. Oh, there's Barb. Chesterfield. Chessa Walker, Chesterfield County Transportation. Thank you. Um, let me just quickly. I think I have everyone. Feel is your is your <clears throat> mic working yet? Not quite, but we know Phil is here. So again, welcome everybody. We use the introductions as our roll call for attendance. Um, I we don't have any considerations to the media agen meeting agenda and no pub public comments, right, Chet? That's correct. All right, well, we'll move right into the meat of this meeting. Uh, the wayfinding plan update, AB design. All right. Um, I think. Let's see. Um, do you see the first page of the fall line? Um, yes. I'm going to probably turn off my camera. So um, what we did is uh, as the first step uh, to approach the project is some ideas for preliminary design. I know Phil is trying to say something, um, but <laughs> I don't know, should we start Somewhere else, do you want to write something on the chat, Phil? Or okay, now I can't hear. Okay. Yeah, I, Gladys, just go ahead, please. Okay. Um, so uh, as I said, we we um, put together some ideas, uh, some, for example, some proposed fonts. Uh, of course, these are all taking into account um, ADA concerns related to whatever fonts are used uh, for legibility. And um, we tend to use a condensed font so that we can uh, include all the text and try to use abbreviations as little as possible. Um, it's a sans serif font and it's universe, universe which is uh, used uh, very often for, for signage. Um, 
close there with Helvetica and um, other fonts, sans serif fonts that are very good for, for wayfinding. Um, then we look at logotypes that we want to use in the signage, uh, symbols for activities, uh, this is a wide range of symbols that we may or may not use depending on the circumstances, but we present them all. These are some of the arrows that we um, typically use, but um, it, they vary with the different design options. Um, so we are going to be presenting three different design options. Um, we looked at the colors and um, the color palette. We have colors for the signs themselves that we are proposing, and then colors for the different uh, localities. Um, we took a look at the colors that were used um, for... Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm trying to move something on the top of the screen. Um, the the four line colors that were proposed um, by sport backers uh, and we um, also we looked at the seals and tried to pick a pred predominant color on the seals some colors of course are not used for wayfinding the red usually is associated with warning or you know stop signs so we try to avo avoid using that color and then the, the yellows or the light colors we don't use because uh, there has to be, as per ADA requirements, a 70% contrast between the letter and the background. And so we typically use darker backgrounds with lighter letters. So um, we there are some colors that have some similarity to what we are presenting, uh, I think. Um, we are using um, the teal for the Ashland for Hanover instead of the red. We are proposing like a purple or violet, green for Henrico, blue for Chesterfield, um, yellow for Richmond, Colonial Heights has a light blue, and Petersburg um, we are proposing a dark yellow, more like a mustard, which has enough contrast between background and letter. Uh, of course, these proposals are all, um, you know, we are receiving your um, feedback in terms of how they, how well they work for each locality. Uh, but this is, as I said, this is just preliminary design open to feedback and discussion. Um, so based on, on those colors that we chose, this is option one. So option one, um, interestingly enough, we proposed this and then when we received uh, the signs that Chesterfield is working on, they have a similar approach, which is a one post with signs coming off the sides. Um, we, we haven't decided yet. I think the Chesterfield post is a round post. We found that whenever we proposed round posts, um, many times we have to switch back to square posts because they are they are more... Uh, available and they are, um, you know, cost-wise, they are much more efficient. But um, there are many elements of the design that are not 100% defined. As I said, this is a very preliminary sketch. So um, we are proposing a standard sign types. We don't know if all of them are going to be used on this project or some of them, or we will need to add more. So this is the first, um, you know, stab that we are giving it to the possible signs. So we have sign type one, which could be a vehicular trailhead sign uh, that will show the locality as well as the information related to parking. And we were um, discussing uh, with Phil or talking with Phil about um, the relationship between the trail and the parking. How do people access the trail? I guess it can be accessed um, for people that are in the neighborhood and they just walk to the trail. It can be accessed by people that are not from the area and they want to park somewhere and start walking on the trail. So there, um, many times there is parking related to the trailheads or the partial trailheads. 
So this could be a sign that we could use. Uh, then we have vehicular directionals as well, if they are needed. Um, pedestrian trailhead signs. Um, then we have um, pedestrian directional signs that can uh, include or not maps. Um, other sign could be a map with a UR here showing the full length of the trail. Um, of course, the mile markers. Uh, then we, uh, re I remember we talked about signs that go on the main corridors that coincide, where the trail coincides with uh, a vehicular path, for example, on Jefferson Davis Highway. So for those, we were thinking of more narrow signs that uh, can be compatible with the, the nature of, of the vehicular path. And then other pedestrian signs that include uh, mileage, the length of time that it will take to bike from one point to the next, the length of time that it will take to walk. Um, then we uh, propose additional signs, of course, regulatory signs that will display any information that is needed related to what are the regulations for, for the trails. Um, and then since uh, we were looking at the trail and there are long um, stretches where there's no uh, particular landmark or there's no, um, the trail keeps going, but how do you know that you're still on the trail? You are walking on a road, how do you know that? So we uh, devised uh, a set of, we call them warning signs, where it lets the biker or walker know that the trail, they are still on the trail. For example, this first one says the trail continues. Um, others that says you use traffic signal because we saw that the trail um, traverses roads many times where they may or may not be a, a traffic signal. signal. Um, I, I think it um, if it goes over tracks or if the surface changes from pavement to gravel, um, if there's a steep grade that we need to warn bikers. So these are, of course, hypothetical signs that we may or may, may not use depending on the circumstances, but we thought that uh, it, they are good signs to have on the package um, for all the situations that may arise uh, along the trail. So this summarizes option one. Um, then the second option is a more traditional, what is called in the is industry post and panel, which is uh, two posts and several panels uh, between the two posts. Um, I just wanted to mention that the first option, for example, this sign, the, uh, you can change or add the inserts. These are independent inserts. So um, on the on the second option is the same thing. This can be independent inserts. This could be the back of the sign since there's a large surface uh, that may not be um, have any information. We can address it with the logotype. And uh, the way we think about this is also like a, sur a surface where you can pull in and out the inserts with the information. And again, there's the vehicular trailhead sign, the directional, the backside of the directional. Um, then this could be a pedestrian trailhead sign, a pedestrian directional, a pedestrian map, a pedestrian directional with the mileage and time information. Um, uh, and um, this will be other part of the package where we have the mile marker, the um, urban road sign, the regulatory sign and warning signs. We just put a couple of them, but um, they, they will have the same messages as on the other option, probably. Um, so this is option two. Um, then we had a third option, which is more traditional, that is a one post with uh, the inserts centered. 
and uh, all the information is mostly centered. We are using um, a different approach in terms of the background and letters. On this one, um, we have a light background with dark letters. The arrows also are a little bit different. Instead of being in a circle, they are contained in a, uh, in a square. Um, so this will be the vehicular trailhead sign, the directional, the pedestrian trailhead sign, um, pedestrian directional, pedestrian map, a mile marker, um, a, um, urban road sign, uh, directional with miles and uh, time. And this will be the regulatory and the different ones for the, for the warning signs. So um, in, in essence, the difference between the three options on this one, the first one, as I said, we are using a main post and posting the information to both sides and the logotype for the trail together with the um, area where the trail uh, is located are vertical and on, on the side of the main information, either either side, left or right, depending if the, side, the sign is double-sided or single-sided. On the second one, the logotype for the trail and the location information is on at the bottom of the sign. On the third uh, proposal, it's on the top of the sign. And of course, the three of them have different arrangements in terms of um, the the proportion and the location of the inserts. So um, this is basically related to the three preliminary proposals. And then we went a little bit into the programming and we took uh, Henrico County, which we understand is the first area that is going to be open or, or finished. Um, so this is the representation of the science um, on, the, on the map. Um, okay. This is the area that we will be addressing, and we picked up this from Henrico County website, which is showing the different sections that are uh, going to be opening. Um, so then uh, we, I know that this probably still belongs to the Richmond section, but we started here because we uh, we think that the trail here transitions from the park to the road. So probably this will be a trailhead, partial trailhead, when people come from both ways from the road to let them know that they are entering the park. Um, this could be a pedestrian directional as well as here because there's a, an, a possible entrance here. This may be the warning signs that let people know that the trail continues across the road, same as here. Uh, this could be a pedestrian sign. This could be a parking sign for this little area. And I understand that there is going to be a larger parking area available as well. Um, OK. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, where it transitions again from the street into the uh, trail proper, um, the, probably a regulatory sign, another trailhead sign, pedestrian directional uh, warning sign, uh, signs if um, there's a, a, a transition or uh, there, it traverses a road here, another pedestrian sign here, a warning sign where it crosses the street. And as I said, these are just samples, first approach, so there's no uh, no real um, depth into what the sign will say at this point. This could be another pedestrian reinforcing sign, pedestrian directional, this as well, a warning sign where you traverse the street, a urban sign on the street, another pedestrian as it goes, keeps going north. And I think this is, this is pretty much it. Um, we, we received the draft, uh, which is very useful, of all the, um, tra the potential trailheads and the destinations. So this information is what is going to be used to feed into the, the signs 
in terms of um, the pedestrian or directional signs that we are going to propose. Um, so um, this pretty much takes care of whatever information we wanted to share with you today. Um, I don't know if you want to make any comments. I see that. Please, please feel free to open your mics and, and share. Thanks, Gladys. This is Brantley at Sportsbackers. Um, I like the presentation so far, so th thanks for that. I just wanted to make a note about the screen that we're seeing right now. Um, we have a concurrent effort right now um, with tool design for our fall line vision plan. <clears throat> and we had uh, a week long charrettes program in May with about 30 individual meetings and over 100 people were engaged. Uh, that's where this list came from. So we prepared that during that. And so this is it's relatively unprocessed. I sent this to Phil, but I just wanted to make a note for all of our locality partners here that we are not specifically making this recommendation, but this is sort of like our first draft of locations and would look forward to workshopping that with y'all as you like. Yes, um, we, but we this is a very good um, list to use as a base. And then as we progress into each sign, con science content, we can uh, tweak it. But if you have something that you want to add to, to this list, please, uh, feel free so that we have the most accurate information that we can from the beginning so that we know how to um, what to include in the signage. It's sharing the um all these documents are on the, the meeting page. I'll put that link in the chat. Thanks, Chet. So um, yeah, the, the next steps will be um, to, um, I just read your comment about enlarging the, the screen. Um, so the next step will be to um, make uh, a choice of out of the three options that we presented so that we can keep developing that and proceed with the design intent drawings where we specify the sizes, the materials. Um, and um, of course, we can uh, always make sort of combinations of the options. Um, for example, on option three, we are using a light background with dark letters, and on the other two, we are doing the opposite. So uh, we, we may say, OK, we like option one, but we would like to switch the background, use a light background and dark letters. So, so that's an option as well. Uh, also, I noticed that we, um, the, for example, the Chesterfield proposal for their parks is using a four inch post for all the signs. Um, we are proposing a four inch post for the vehicular and a three inch post for the pedestrian. But um, again, this is only preliminary. And then when we refine and tweak, uh, we can, um, it, it's just for um, previous experience where we proposed the four inches from the get go and then we reduced due to cost to the three inch, which is viable. So um, as I said, these, these are all done to scale, but um, that's why we put the people for reference. Uh, but then when we move to the design part of the project, uh, some things change, some measurements get adjusted, some heights. So um, we would like to get feedback in terms of out of the three options, which one uh, the majority of people prefer. And then we go with that one. And as, as I said, we develop um, further uh, details for each each option and how it's going to be built and what materials uh, and all the information that is needed for a, a fabricator or manufacturer to, to fabricate the signs. Gladys, I see Todd, you're from Henrico's hand up. 
Yeah, thank you, Darana. Um, I have a question on the the third option signage. Um, so some of the signs will need to be double sided. So do these take a whole separate uh, bracket and for the back side um, so that the pole's not in the way to do a double sided sign, or how does that work? Um, well, we when we have similar signs, uh, it depends on on the fabricator and how many of these signs are are double sided. But uh, in many cases, we create a box that has some depth. So uh, actually, the post goes inside the box, and it, so you don't see the post from the other side. And you will see uh, instead of being a single uh, aluminum or whatever material we decide on um, panel, it's it's a box that has probably it has the width of the uh, post. So that's. For example, something that we did for um, Appomattox River, I believe. So uh, Appomattox River Trail. So yes, um, as I said, it depends on how many double-sided signs we will have. We may want to go with the box concept for all of them for consistency, or we may just do some of them, the, the ones that are double-sided uh, with, with that concept. So. But yeah, th those are all the details that we uh, embark on once we go to the design phase. I don't know if anyone else has their hand up ahead of me, but I have a, a few comments. Um, I... Brantley, you're muted. Brantley, Brantley, Brantley. Sorry, Brantley. I was muted. Um, Barb actually had her hand up. So I was kind of leaning towards the third option, thinking that it might have a smaller footprint and there's a, you know, practical consideration to that. Um, but maybe I'm not understanding exactly. So that might not be the case. But that was my perspective so far, but I like them all. Thank you. Um, Brantley, you're up. Yeah, I I think I'm going to take my time before I think of which one is my favorite or, or if there's a, a modified version that might check more boxes. Generally speaking, I like what I'm what I'm seeing, but I want to bring up sort of the importance of a couple of things. I think novelty will be important um, and, and just from a not to make things difficult, but to, if there's a sign package that uh not just in the way the signs are designed but how the form factor is designed uh that disambiguates it from other trail projects i think has value i'm not saying it's the only thing that we should be considering but just from a place making standpoint understanding that like while the fall line signs look different than the capital trail and the appomattox river trail and potential future trail projects um i think that's there's benefit there um I, and the scale model that you were showing earlier with the couple that was on the left side of the screen i don't it's, I'm, I'm not I don't remember which model it was it showed one sign and actually it was on the last one too um some of the signs are right at eye level and I think that I would I would largely discourage that uh in, in unless we're thinking about orienting them in a way that wouldn't block trail view uh, access and potentially have conflicts um I I tend to like ones that are lower or a higher above the normal field of view from a transportation conflict standpoint. Um, I really like what I saw in Indianapolis where they had a lot of things that were actually oriented at the ground level and even lower than the 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 mile marker signs that were in these packages uh, or well above head height so that you um, just it just didn't limit any kind of urban um, conflict visibility. Uh, it'd be, I think it would be helpful I think I'm going to have a role in fundraising for some of these and knowing which ones might cost more than the others. Uh, I think we talked a little bit about it, I think, in the in a nuanced sense about which posts square or round or three inch or four inch. Um, I'd certainly like to know more about that, but uh, it I think it should be considered uh, if we're going to in some ways we could think of having more signs uh, than fewer ones if they were less expensive or 
just um, you know saving costs on the same number of signs. And then overall, I think the um, increasing the conspicuity of the logo, I think would be really valuable. I, I think the logo is really small in a lot of these signs, and there's a lot of blank color. Um, and I, you know, I wonder if some of the the visual aspect of it could, you know, instead of having a horizontal band at the top or the bottom, instead it could be more of like a square panel um, that had a, just a bigger a bigger section for the the logo. Um, could be helpful to trail users. So thanks for. I know it's a lot of comments, but thanks. No, that's great. They are very useful. Um, yes. Uh, so in terms of the height of the sign, um, the first option, for example, uh, has the, this, these signs are at the higher level. Um, and the problem with lower level signs uh, sometimes it's uh, lawnmower issues if they are on grass and vandalizing issues sometimes. So um, that's something that we need to see what percentage of the signage is on grass, what percentage is on gravel, what per percentage is on pavement. And maybe the sign design will differ, depend will be different depending on, on where the sign goes um, in terms of the construction details. Um, but yes, for example, this one that has information that actually is smaller in size and needs to be read, we usually try to put it at, you know, at the height that people can read. If you put this information too small, um, it, you may not be able to read it. If you put it too high, you may not be able to read it. The same happens with the re regulatory signs. So um, the, this option, for example, was a combination of pedestrian size where you have enough size for the font to be read even at a higher um, location and the combination of signs that were at reading level. And this one, the mile marker actually could be all the way down to the ground. The maps um, also, I would like to have them, you know, at at the height that can be read. Of course, this one probably can could be a, a lot higher, um, especially if it's um, a sign that is located on a on a road. Um, also, we we try to keep the signs uh, simple in terms of uh, if they have to be compatible with uh, VDOT signs and regulations. Um, so, yeah, and the issue about the logotype is that it's square. <laughs> so uh, there's nothing we can do uh, about it. We can put it in a larger field. Uh, for example, that's why I like this option because it has an optimization in terms of, you know, we, we couldn't make it, um, we could, we can make this larger and have the logotype large and the Humraico or the location occupying a smaller field. We took the longest name uh, to use as a parameter to ha how much space we need. Um, so there are a lot of considerations. Um, we could, you know, uh, put place the logotype in a different place in a larger format. So, um, as I said, these are preliminary ideas, and that's why the the kind of input that you are providing is very useful, because uh, once we ha we decide one direction to go, we can try different options for that particular option. Um, again, this can be um, located in in a more prominent area and go all the way down to the ground. Um, cost also is a factor. Um, in uh, some projects, we go all the way to the ground with the sign, and um, that way we can use larger logotype. But as I said, once we sort of agreed on one option, we can investigate different options within that option. So. Um, any feedback that you can give us will be great. 
Thanks. Yeah, I think that was those are uh, I, I appreciate the response. I, I largely was asking those questions or, or making the comments so that our locality partners and everyone who's going to be helping to, to make the decision was thinking about those different um, use uh, aspects. So uh, I wasn't I wasn't making a judgment. So thanks. No, no, that's fine. Excellent. No problem. Are um, maybe we need to put together a matrix with some of the most important factors that we want with the sign, like the cost, place making, the logo, prominence of the logo. I don't know. We could probably come up with 10 or so and go through each, each of the options and weight them to help us make a decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah. So Gladys or Chet, do you know when we might get the matrix? Because we definitely can send that, you know, over email, and almost then let people vote that way, or at least provide input. I don't think it'll be. Um, I don't know if we'll hold it to <laughs> hold it to all the way the vote without a deeper conversation, but at least gives us our preferred option based on input. Um, in a way yeah, that, you know, yeah, go yeah, ahead, Jay. I, I think, I think we could do that. Um, I'm going to, um, ask if Phil has gotten his mic working or not. And I think, uh, uh, outreach would probably come from him. Can y'all hear me from my phone? Yep. Yes, Phil. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I apologize for my, uh, <clears throat> for my team's not working on my computer. It, it worked for me earlier today, so I'm kind of frustrated about that. I'll have to go back and review the first part of the meeting, but I, I have been trying to take notes and keep up with things. I definitely, Barbara, like your suggestion about uh, putting together a matrix and trying to go back through. Um, I could use some help on trying to identify what categories are most important to, to identify for that, but would love to, to help you know continue working on that uh, with Gladys and with the committee. So. Um, Shoot, just <laughs> however you can to help me uh, put together that Im most important list of, of items. Yes. Well, I and we can brief. I'm sorry, who's speaking? Go ahead. Oh, hey, sorry, Gladys. Well, I was going to say that, um, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I know we have a few more minutes left in this meeting. Um, I know Bart mentioned cost. Um, do we want to kind of see if we can help Phil and Gladys with some other things we might want to see? Um, somebody just put something, Brantley put something in the chat. Okay, so you're getting some things in the chat. Um, Gladys, do you have access to that or Phil so you can be recording what folks are putting in? Yes, um, uh, Rona, I can see it. Thank you. OK, thank you. And just and so this isn't exhaustive yet, but anyone else want? Um, I know we talked about the two side. Um, so even I guess a, a box on there that defines whether or not it, it can have two sides would be helpful. OK. Um, What else can we think of? Um, I guess, do we talk about, I guess, size of it? Um, like, is any one option bigger than the other? Take up more footprint? Maybe describe that. All right. Um, and then Brantley put in another one about legibility. Mm -hmm. I don't know which ones are easiest to read. Can we think of anything else, team? This is Phil. Um, I, I did wonder as well um, about how it actually, you know, uh, how you have these in the ground. Um, I know the single post versus two posts, obviously the, the two posts would be more stable, you would assume, but just, uh, you know, how much that is a factor of the, the signs as well.
So uh, in terms of cost, um, we probably will have to uh, submit this to get some idea to a fabricator. I don't know if uh, um, you worked in the past with any particular fabricator that you can suggest or um, it's a lot of work to put an estimate together. So um, some fabricators will be amenable to do it for free, so to speak, as a favor, hoping that they will get the project. Uh, that's why I, I had a little bit of a question, and I don't know if you have the answer uh, already, but uh, how are these signs going to be procured? Are they going to go to an open bid or you're going to select from suggested vendors from us or do you already work with the vendor? Uh, because as I said, um, putting a, an accurate estimate, uh, we, we can look at estimates from previous projects, but um, actually we don't have anything that looks exactly <laughs> like any of these options to tell you. So. Um, if you know already any of these questions that I'm asking in terms of how will the manufacturing part of the project work, uh, that will help us, you know, try to, to get a more accurate estimate on the cost. Um, yeah, we, we could look at uh, what was done for the Appomattox River Trail. I don't have any idea of the Capital Trail, what the cost was, uh, but if somebody has it and can provide it, that will be good. Uh, I know that Chesterfield is working with APCO and maybe they also have sometimes some kind of estimate on those one post, two sides, uh, sign. So I can. Um, yeah, I'll check with them. If they have any estimates to sh that I can share. OK. Um, all right, well, we'll we'll try to um, see what the best way will be to to get this, you know, in terms of get an, a, a, an idea of the cost, the cost. Um, all right, and we'll uh, put the matrix together um, and circulate it so that um, that will help us as well. Any other comments, ideas that you have? None. Any more questions? Um, do we know when we could expect the matrix? And then, like, I know you have maybe a working deadline. Yeah, um, the, the matrix we can we can have it ready fairly soon. The the piece that we will not have right away is the cost. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the only. Thing that will maybe stop us from moving yeah. on this, but mm -hmm. um, because I was going to say that we could, you know, look at what, um, and so you have no idea of the different costs between the three options at all. Um, no, not really, because also, you know, what we provide is is called design intent drawings. Uh, they are not shop drawings per se. So the mm -hmm. fabricator receives those, and then sometimes they value engineer. They suggest things like, well, maybe we can make this more cost effective if you do it, if we do it this way or that way. So um, it doesn't. That's why we are fairly open with the specifications. Because if we make them very tight, like we tell them exactly what mm, screw number they need to use, then nobody wants to bid on them because they are, you know, enslaved to whatever is on the drawings. And sometimes they manufacture science in a different way. They use 
different techniques, different materials, uh, their machinery set for um, different options. So um, we just, for example, the one that has the two posts, uh, we were using some, you know, details with screws, uh, but that may be different depending on who is fabricating the sign. Um, also varies manufacturer to manufacturer. Some, you know, I saw it time and again, some we bid out a project and we got something, an amount for from a fabricator and the next fabricator is almost double the amount. Uh, it depends on how busy they are, if they want the job, if they don't want the job, if there is a transportation issue, if they are close, if they are far. So th there are so many variables. Um, none of this science was meant to be extremely expensive because they don't have any special cuts, like for example, the one on Appomattox that had the top that had to be laser cut. This, this can be um, plates that are cut and shared for different type of signs. So we try to make them, um, you know, cost effective. Um, mm -hmm. But as I said, I can. Um, well, we can keep working. Let me, Barb has her hand up, Barb. If we, if we just knew the square footage, um, the area of the signs, do you think that would be kind of a good way to say, well, this one's going to be more expensive just because the sign package is bigger. The whole thing is, though, you've probably got a bunch of the mile markers and only a few of the trailhead. So you'd need to consider that as well, right? Yes, because we will get probably an approximate price per unit. But then, like you said, there may be some that you have like, you know, 100 of them. And then there are others that we have only four or five. So, yeah. but yeah, but uh, in general, uh, you know, these sizes, for example, um, I'm trying to go back to the drawing. Uh, I'm still sharing the screen, right? Yes. So, um, for example, this this phase of design has this is similar to it's the same size as this. This horizontal bar is probably the same size as this vertical bar. Um, so this, of course, may be uh, more square footage <laughs> than 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 this one. Although this has, you know, this is only one post, but you will have to cantilever it so that it doesn't fall. So it requires a little bit more engineering, so to speak. So uh, there, there are um, nuances, but uh, this probably has the same square footage as the others, but instead of being vertical, it's more like a, a square. So um, we, we didn't, this panel, has the same size as the same panel on the other options. This one probably also, except that this is horizontal and the others are vertical. So there, there's not that much difference in terms of, although it may appear because the ones that have the centered posts seem to be larger, but actually it's the same size. So uh, there's not that much difference between the three options in terms of the sizes because we do things to scale. So um, they can't be that different. Um, but yeah, we will try to get um, a, some type of cost estimate um, so that- I have a question, Gladys. Yes. So I guess just tell me the, just some of the next steps and the importance of like picking one of the designs now versus like, can the, pro does the process halt until we pick one or is there ways that it keeps going um without us selecting one just and, and i know i haven't got the scope in front of me to to look at all the things that you're set to do but i'm just trying to figure out where this fits in the process and does it stop you or can you keep working without this um us choosing one 
Yeah, it, it definitely stops it because once we get into the design refinement, we can only, I mean, we only budget it developing the design for one of the three options. Uh, and as I said, we can provide options within the option in terms of size of the logo type or different things, but um, we can't develop materials, sizes, uh, some global details for all the three options. I mean, we can, but it's, it wasn't conceived that way. And, and along the years, that's what we usually do. We go with one and we invest the time in developing the details for that one that was picked. Uh, yeah, we and, and I just, yeah, I just wanted to know only because, you know, I guess, and maybe my peers can, can chime in, do we think, you know, us picking the type of sign um, ends it, uh, it ends at us? <laughs> Let me see. I don't know an easier way to put that. Meaning, you know, once we say, say we say option three, and like, does it really end with us saying option three and then moving forward? Or do we think even when it, even if we select one, we're going to have all of these kind of off putting things that a locality will come up with, just say Richmond Urban, and we don't have enough room for this sign. C can you make it, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just asking in that. If we were to pick three, chat, you know, is that, you know, we're going to present to the board, here's the design of the signs and just be done with it? Or do we think that, you know, localities, different departments and people are going to want more input before, um, even with the design refinement given? I'm just posing the question. Yeah, I, th I think that's a great question. And I, I'd turn it back to you. Like, <laughs> are you, <laughs> no. it, it, is your crew going to need to have more input before you can get on board with a uh, with picking one? Um, I mean, my my impression as as we develop this RFP was that the wayfinding plan would outline the general look, style, feel of the components of a general signage program for the entire forty three mile trail. And then uh, using the the specifications that are here, hopefully the plan would include the different size signs, et cetera, that could be implemented. But then each jurisdiction would pick and choose from this to guide fabrication and placement and everything else. So it's not I, I never I never thought that this was going to cover every single possible option and location. But that it would provide the the consistency, you know, as you cross political boundaries, to be able to have something that is uh, is a good guide for any user of the trail, whether they're local or not. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'd turn it back to you and Todd and and Sharon and and Chessa to let us know whether yeah, we're I, trying to bite off yeah, too much. Yeah, I think. Barb had to jump off, but I think that having the matrix and then I guess a visual of each of the three will have this um, when we're kind of rating them and maybe during that same time, that's when we can share with our, you know, in our case, like parks and um, other people in DPW, and maybe that's like the time that we can share where we have everything in front of us. And that may do it for us, Chet, as far as um, everybody's on board. But um, Brantley? I think you bring up a good point. And I, you know, I think many of us are just seeing this for the first time. And I think uh, there are, there are, I think if we picked one of these, would it be a sufficient wayfinding plan? Yes. But are there ways for us to find um, the, ways to kind of optimize what what we'd hope to see in it and uh, a couple of questions or, or ideas that i had that that are not included here is uh, alternate materials like is there a potential of using wood anywhere uh is there a potential of having a sign made out of something besides the kind of hard plastic that that have been used in other places um some of the great things that we've seen in other trail systems are 
wayfinding included in the pavement itself, whether it's uh, uh, painted or if it's a, a, a piece of fabricated metal uh, in the case of Indianapolis or or the Moon on Trail. And you know, I'm just I don't I think that we should explore that before we pick one, and maybe we choose not to go with some of those things, but we should at least have the conversation. And maybe the matrix is one of the ways that we could do that. But or, excuse me, maybe, maybe one of the ways is to make sure that our parks and other our charrette uh, fall line vision plan partners uh, who at least the ones who have, you know, uh, locality um, authority have a chance to talk about that. Yes, uh, the, the two comments that I have to make. First, um, the option that is selected, this is a partial uh, group of signs. Uh, so there are going to be a lot more signs included. For example, there may be uh, an option for an urban sign that is much more narrow, much taller. So this is just a short segment of what can be part of the of the package. Um, what we cannot do is, as I said, sign develop to the maximum package all the options. That's why we would like to choose one and then develop additional sign types. And we can develop as many sign types as needed. Like I say, a mile marker can be on the ground, off the ground, you know, to the side, on the grass, depending on where it's located. And it's still, it still has the same look and still belongs to the same sign option, but it has different versions of it. Uh, in terms of um, uh, putting signage on the pavement, any of these options can include that. Uh, because, so what I mean is like any option that you choose can include additional elements. Uh, mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, the materials, I will say that we develop signs in wood for um, Maymont and they did not age well. So you have to have a tremendous amount of maintenance if you're going to be embarking in that direction. Uh, one of the questions I asked in the first uh, meeting was whether there was a concern about using recycled materials or, pr or plastic. Um, sometimes uh, some of those materials have more limited, limited choices in terms of thickness, color. So, um, yeah, even once we pick one option, that option can be per done in different materials. The same option can be done in plastic or in aluminum, in baked enamel, which would be extremely expensive, but it's, uh, you know, graffiti f um, safe. So um, the, right now we haven't defined the materials. That's why that's part of the next uh, step, the design step, where we define materials, color, sizes, and many of these, si these sizes may have to be adjusted. Sometimes we find that originally uh, the sign we conceived is too large or too small. So, um, as I said, these look like finished products because they are done on a computer. In the olden times, they would have been hand-drawn sketches. So think of, uh, of these as hand-drawn sketches. <laughs> Um, they, they still have a lot of elements that can be adjusted or, or further defined. Uh, in terms of discussing um, the or, or getting a buyout from all the parties that could be potentially be involved in the project, uh, I will suggest uh, if you uh, if you need maybe more time to make a decision and you want to have internal meetings with each of your extended teams and have them have input as well, that will be useful because uh, once we go with one option, as I said, we are sort of married with it. So uh, as many people as can be on the know of what we are working on and they can feel that they have been shown, they have been heard, their input uh, was valuable, it's better to get that at the beginning rather than uh, we had a project that they changed the option halfway and we had we had almost everything developed for one option and then they changed uh, and there was a, a cost attached to that for them um, so we based on that experience we would like to avoid that so uh, if you need an extra week to discuss it with with your teams uh, 
any materials that you would like from us. Uh, I mean, th these are shareable PDFs, so they, uh, we reduce the size of the PDFs so that they can be emailed. So uh, if you want to email them to your teams and, and get some input that way, um, we, we are I think we are going to give the matrix to you anyway, even if we don't have the cost portion of it. Uh, we can put TBD to be determined. Uh, I know that that's going to play a, a part, uh, probably a big part, but um, you know, we, we I don't want to stop the process until we get that piece of information. So um, I think that that will be useful, a useful way to to keep moving forward. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I, I I mean, I just wish we knew, I don't know, I guess we just knew kind of the price, even if it's like the the material of, of not so much the sign itself for fabrication, but even like the poles, the design that's, um, cause you know, here we may pick the most expensive one, not even knowing, and then, you know, somebody finds out and then like that other place, we're forced to go to the cheaper one just because we didn't pick it, even though I don't know how anyone would figure that out. But yeah, if we had some idea, even like I said, if it was on and, and leaving the signs out, but really like installation, um, again, cost of the material outside of the sign itself, if we had any of those being that the signs probably, you said that those would be variably, you know, probably the same based on the kind of just reconfigurations of each other. Um, but yeah, I, I guess just like, even in that suggested material, like you said, recycle, we don't know what recycle looks like um, compared to non-recycle and then, or say like wood, we, we kind of probably know we don't want wood, but, um, so anyway, I, I think that, um, yeah, if you if we give us the matrix, we give it to our teams along with, you know, these visuals. And then I think that we can at least um, rate our choices um, from each locality. And then we kind of go from there, um, which I can see, you know, we probably can turn around in, in a week from whenever you get us the matrix. All right. Perfect. Because I know we're on a very tight timeline. Before we blink, we'll be in August. I know. I'm like, ugh. All right. So we've had some of our localities drop off. Check. Do you have any more comments or Gladys? Uh, I just wanted to, if we look at the agenda, there's some things we didn't get through. So um, when we uh, mm -hmm. coordinate with Gladys to send out the matrix, we'll put some additional prompts in there with a date to get get information back from everybody. Um, I'd ask everyone to take a look at the attachments um, that are in the meeting page that I put in the chat, uh, just so you can become more familiar with what was shared on the screen today. And um, yeah, I think we're going to be it's going to be tough to to stick to the the approved schedule. Uh, I just want to put that out there, um, but we're going to do the best we can and uh, work with, with each locality to get, get feedback in a timely manner. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, I think it's been a productive meeting. So thanks everybody for all your participation. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks all. Hey, Phil, are you still on? Phil, are you still on?